Our first scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-9. through 9. Please listen for the word of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Please listen for the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Can you believe that it's already been a week since Easter? For some of us, that may feel like, wow, it's already a week. And for others, it may feel like, oh, finally, got through that week. Um, Last week, I talked a little bit about our groceries with uh, ShopRite from Home. Um, I don't know about any of you, but are, are you finding yourselves um, starting to think like, I really need to start thinking about how long this is going to last, how long this food in this pantry is going to be okay, um, you know, what's in the refrigerator, how long is it going to be okay before it resurrects, um, and that's a bad joke. Uh, but for real, I mean, we, we do find ourselves in this place where we're thinking, well, how long, how long do we have uh, for this food to last? Uh, so we have a nice little spreadsheet where we're checking off, okay, we had this, we had this, now in two days we have to eat this based on expiration dates, and three days we have to eat this, because um, the food in there is not imperishable. So we have before us, um, a story of the disciples where uh, they have an encounter with Jesus. And it's an encounter that's going to change them. Uh, they're going to go from disciples to becoming apostles, 
from going to be from, from being people whom Jesus taught to people whom Jesus has sent. Now, they're meeting together, and it's uh, a, a couple days. Uh, it's a week uh, after the resurrection. It's a, it's a week after that Sunday um, when Mary Magdalene had encountered Jesus, and Jesus spoke to her and told her to go to the disciples and tell them uh, that he is alive. And they're there together, all but one. Thomas is, I don't who knows what Thomas is doing, but he's not there. And amongst them appears Jesus, and he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And he commissions them, and he sends them, and calls them uh, his apostles. He gives them the Holy Spirit, he breathes on them. And he says that if you forgive any, they are forgiven. But we learn that Thomas wasn't there. Thomas shows up later, and you can imagine the disciples' excitement. Mary was right. Jesus is actually alive. Um, and Thomas is, uh, he's not ready for this message. He hears it, but he says, I will not believe. I surely will not have faith in what you're saying until I see Jesus and I place my fingers in the hands where, in the holes where the nails were. So Thomas um, hears the gospel, but he doesn't believe. And then the, ta the text says, a week later. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. I wonder what Thomas's week was like. I wonder if he overheard, you know, Peter and James, John and the others talking about their encounter with Jesus. And as he heard, was he listening in disbelief? Was he kind of criticizing them, mumbling under his breath, these guys, what are they talking about? Or was he listening with a desire for it to be true, with a, a hopefulness that, well, if they saw Jesus, maybe I'll see Jesus. I'm not going to believe until I do, but maybe I'm going to see Jesus. I don't know what his week was like. Um, I'm sure it was long. Who knows, maybe it was fast, maybe um, it flew by, but I, I imagine if the others that I spent all my time with had this wonderful experience and I was left out and I was cut off from the experience and in that way also kind of cut off from these people, that it would have felt like a very long week one where in Thomas's world, Jesus is still dead. In Thomas's mind, Jesus is still in the grave. In Thomas's world, the hope that he had hoped for was lying in the tomb. Actually, wasn't even in the tomb. They didn't know where the body was. For him, the story was over. But as we know, the story was not over. In fact, and this may be where the, the gospel in this gospel story lies, even while Thomas was in unbelief, it was still true that Jesus had risen from the dead. It was true for Thomas as it was true for all of the other disciples. The only difference between Thomas and the others was that Thomas didn't believe. Thomas didn't have the experience that the apostles had, and he didn't have the physical encounter with Jesus. And so he did not have the same faith that they had. So the difference between them wasn't that Jesus wasn't 
risen from the dead. It's that in his own subjective experience, the reality of Christ's resurrection was not manifest. But a week later, Thomas is with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and again says, peace be with you. And then he, he turns to Thomas and says, Thomas, put your finger in my hand. Take your hand and put it in my side. Don't lack faith. Have faith. Now, I don't think that Jesus is here scolding Thomas. I don't think the conversation that they're having is one where Jesus is like, you better have faith. Hey, I'm here. You said you weren't going to believe unless you could actually put your, hand, your finger in my hand. Well, here it is. I don't think Jesus had that approach to him. I think Jesus approached Thomas with grace. That... This is what Thomas needed in order to become the apostle that he was to become. And Jesus met him where he was. And that's the amazing thing about Jesus. That's the amazing thing about our God, that our God accommodates to us. God makes God available to us. And he does it through his word. He's done it by becoming one of us. It's an amazing thing about our God that he meets us on our terms. It is an act of grace. It is an act of mercy. And what is Thomas's response? But my God, my Lord and my God. This is... A, an amazing declaration that Thomas is making. He doesn't say rabbi. He doesn't say teacher. He says, my Lord, which is the name that um, they would have used for God, my Lord and my God. He's calling Jesus God. This is an act of worship on Thomas's part. And Jesus says to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. There are a few times in the Gospels where Jesus actually speaks about us, about you and me. Uh, one is in John 17 when he prays for us, uh, those who will come to believe. But here, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Jesus blessed you. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. That is you. The story ends by saying that Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, but that these stories, these in the Gospel of John, and in particular this one about Thomas, these were written down so that we would come to believe that Jesus was the Messiah, that he's the Son of God, and that through believing... This is what it says, that through believing, you may have life in his name. Our other passage today was from 1 Peter. And this is one of, it's just amazing. Um, the, the hopefulness, the joy, um, the passion that's present for what God has done in Jesus for our ultimate hope. That ultimate hope. We find ourselves in a place of waiting um, in the same way that Thomas found himself in a week between Jesus's return to the disciples and Jesus's return to Thomas. Um, we find ourselves in that time from when Jesus came back to his disciples and when he's coming again. We don't know when that is. When will the day of the Lord be? When will we see the salvation that God has wrought through the resurrection of Jesus, the new creation that he has begun in the resurrection of his son. When will we see that? 
I, we don't know. But as Christians, it is our faith that God is renewing the world through his Son. And we know this through the resurrection, and it is our hope as it is the hope for all the world. We find ourselves waiting. So Peter says to a congregation that was enduring some form of suffering at the time, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercies, you've been given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our hope is founded on the resurrection of Jesus. If Jesus is raised from the dead, then everything has changed. If Jesus is really risen, then he really is Lord. And if he really is Lord, then the one who gave himself for us, the one who loves us, the one who is making all things new, that is the one in whom we trust. It changes everything. It changes the way we see the world. It changes the way we see ourselves and our relationships to others. If Jesus is Lord, it changes everything. It's a hope into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Imperishable and undefiled. It's not something that can fade away. It's not like my groceries. <laughs> it's being protected by the power of God through faith. We are. For what? For a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. We rejoice in this, though even if for a little while we suffer various trials. I am so glad that there are passages in the Bible, in the New Testament, that tell us that there may be times that we suffer various trials. If the Bible is anything, it is something that truly grasps the reality of life, that it is not easy that it is not always good, that it is it can be difficult, but that even in the midst of those trials and difficulties, that our faith in God need not be shaken, but that the genuineness of our faith can be proved through these trials. As the passage says, that it may be found to result in praise and glory and honor through Jesus. And then the passage in Peter ends, and it's, it's as if Peter remembered this episode with Thomas. And it says, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you're receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter knew that we would be in a position where we would have faith in one whom we had not seen, and that we would experience trials and difficulties. He is calling us to continue to have faith, that our faith in the midst of difficulties, knowing that even our Lord suffered, and if he suffered, so too would we. But that through trials and through suffering, our faith in this God of resurrection, this faith in the God who raises from the dead, this God who makes old new, that will give a rebirth to the whole creation, that we have trust in him with a joy that's indescribable and glorious. My hope and prayer for you is that your faith would be made strong in the midst of trials, that your faith would prove as rich as gold, that your faith in God would be one that would not need concrete manifestations like Thomas, but that through the very word spoken to you, 
that you would believe that there is a God in heaven who loves you, who is with you, especially when we find ourselves alone, week to week, cut off from one another. May God be with you. Amen.